The group gets word that there is an outside live Fox News broadcast going on a few blocks away. to protest or demonstrate here in New York, but this anarchist group came forward. They really are the, one of the least attractive groups of demonstrators I've ever seen. And this is the moment I got arrested live on Fox News for filming someone else getting arrested. If violence breaks out, don't worry, we can handle it. Our, uh, our Fox News team can take this bunch of... Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to use any foul language, but... Uh, uh, the funny thing, let me go back to our scripted program. This operating sound device without a permit. Ah, this is free America? Well, I know this. They could try some technical thing with the Class C that they gave me that is like speeding or jaywalking. But the other camera guys did nothing. Yes, these guys... I mean, I was filming him. I was just in the zone, man. I was just looking in the screen. And the next minute, bam. What was your charge for? What did everybody do something uh, for? Traffic, Violet. Uh, traffic. Stopping traffic. Stopping traffic. They were on the street. Listen, I really don't want to get arrested again, man. So yeah, I listen, wanna, folks. Get out of here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for the support. Yeah. It had been an incredibly surreal night. But the following morning, we were back out in Union Square. I'm Richard Gage. I'm an architect. I've been an architect for 20 years. I'm the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. We now have 160 architects, for, architects and engineers signed on demanding a new investigation of Congress, an unimpeachable investigation with subpoena power. By next year, I promise you, we're going to have 1,000 architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. I heard David Ray Griffin talking about the 118 first responders who were recorded by the city's New York Fire Commissioner. What did they talk about? Every one of those 118 talked about explosions, flashes of light, sounds of explosions before the body above the airplane impacts in those buildings came down. That's extraordinary. Did any of that information find its way into the FEMA report, into the NIST report? No. Do we see it on the media today? It's been hidden and very effectively hidden, but the truth cannot be hidden for long. It's coming out and we are growing by millions every year. You can't not see it and go, oh my God, this is true. These buildings, one, two, and seven came down by controlled demolition. It's clear we've got thermite, uh, chemical evidence of thermite and incendiary used by the military. We've got ex a pulverization of concrete and the World Trade Center towers to the size of talcum powder. There's a mechanism that has to create that. That mechanism can only be explosives. The gravitational collapse, the gravitational energy of this, of this collapse does, cannot produce talcum powder. It cannot produce molten metal. Let's face it, fires are only 14, 1500 degrees, typical office fires. That's true with jet fuel too. Fires cannot make molten metal. There's a thousand degrees of difference. Steel doesn't even begin to melt until uh, 3000 degrees. We're talking three, 4000 degree temperatures found by the firemen flowing like lava. Where did that come from? Hey, 
Good afternoon. We are at Union Square. We're ready to chant. We're going to be waking the rest of the people up that haven't come out. People are going to hear in the building surrounding us. People are going to hear in the subway station below. 9-11 was inside job. We're here for a fundraiser for first responders. It's going to be starting at Webster Hall in about an hour and a half. And, uh, you know, this is, this is it. Day three. 9-11 was an inside job. 9-11 was an inside job. And this is why it's so difficult for 9-11 families. Believe me, you can't believe how difficult this is. I mean, I've done it. I, mean, I don't know how many times I've talked about this, but you're watching. My son died. And it was a gruesome death. Extremely gruesome death. And I'm a lucky one. I took my son home. And he suffered horribly. I don't, I, I'm not really positive. I, that's been part of my investigation, along with finding the truth. But what happened to him? What happened in the last split second? Well, parent goes through that. Did your child suffer? How much did they suffer? Did they die immediately? I have a family member whose son was six foot five, about 245 pounds, and he disintegrated. How did God did he how did he disintegrate? But they don't want to ask the questions. It's just such a horrible, horrible, horrible thing to think of. I went to all the commission hearing meetings. I actually had both that some truth would come out of those. I was very enthusiastic. I used to take drive down and take the trains down, but it didn't last long. I'm in the FBI building. Mother's standing there talking to the family members. They asked them, how did you know that these hijackers were taking train over, training to fly down in the airports in Florida? One day afterwards, not even a day. The next day, they're not even talking 24 hours. He said, well, maybe we got lucky. That's his answer. We asked him about the put options. How come so many people make money off these uh, these explosions from 9-11, uh, from the 9-11 attacks? They said, oh, that's disinformation. So here we are, FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They investigated one day. They gave us a 19 hijack and said, that's it. Story's ended. They're there for one reason, as Alan Dulles said when he first formed the CIA. He says this is not about communism. This is about the unfettered access of the corporate world over natural resources. And it's not going to change. And I don't know how we're going to have to change, but the only way we can do it, and this is the one opportunity we have, because we were talking earlier, this is their Achilles heel. They fucked up.